Good morning, dear students of class 8. Welcome to the English online learning class. Today we are going to take up lesson 7 of your honeydew, a visit to Cambridge. Now before we read this lesson, this is a story of a meeting between two extraordinary people, both of them disabled or differently able. As we now say, Stephen Hawking as is one of the greatest scientists of our time. He suffers from a form of paralysis that confines him to a wheelchair and allows him to speak only by punching buttons on a computer which speaks for him in a machine-like voice. So this great scientist who is no more living now, he suffers from a paralysis. He suffered from a form of paralysis because of which he was just confined to a wheelchair and he could speak only by punching buttons on a computer which spoke for him. Now Firdos Kanga, who is the person who is meeting Stephen Hawking, he is a writer and a journalist who lives and works in Mumbai. Kanga was born with brittle bones, very weak bones, that tended to break easily when he was a child. So both Stephen Hawking and Firdos Kanga, they are differently able. Like Hawking, Kanga moves around in a wheelchair. So this meeting of these two differently able people, Stephen Hawking and Firdos Kanga, where they exchange thoughts and they talk to each other on what means to live in a wheelchair and how the normal people should react to the disabled people. Now, Cambridge was my metaphor for England. So, this is how the lesson begins. Firdaus Kanga is sharing his experience. He says that Cambridge, which is a place in England, and he refers Cambridge as his metaphor for England. It's a place renowned for education. And it was strange that when I left, it became altogether something else because I had met Stephen Hawking there. So when Fridos left this place, it had a bigger meaning because he had met this personality Stephen Hawking there. It was on walking tour through Cambridge that the guide mentioned Stephen Hawking Poor man who is quite disabled now, though he is a worthy successor to Isaac Newton, whose chair he has at the university. So his guide said to Firdos that Stephen Hawking also belongs to the space. He is referred to him as a poor man who is badly disabled, but he is a successor to this famous scientist Isaac Newton and his chair he occupies at the university. And I started because I had quite forgotten that this most brilliant and completely paralyzed astrophysicist, the author of A Brief History of Time, one of the biggest sellers ever lived there. So suddenly Firdaus remembered that this great astrophysicist scientist, the author of this book, A Brief History of Time, also lived in this place, Cambridge. When the walking tour was done, I rushed to a phone booth and almost steering the cord so it could reach me outside. Phone Stephen Hawking's house. So, when the walking tour was over, he rushed to the phone booth for thus, and then, as he was also in a wheelchair, he took the cord in a desperation outside and he rang up Stephen Hawking. There was his assistant on the phone and I told him 
I had come in a wheelchair from India. Perhaps he thought I had propelled myself all the way to write about my travels in Britain. I had to see Professor Hawking. Even 10 minutes would do half an hour, he said, from 3.30 to 4. So Firdaus was asking just, just 10 minutes to meet Stephen Hawking as he had come to India from India, he said, and he was writing about his travels in Britain. And he had come from, in on a wheelchair. He tried to explain him so that he can allow him meeting Stephen Hawking. And he was very delighted because uh, the assistant, his secretary, assistant who was answering the call said that you can meet for half an hour from 3.30 to 4. And suddenly I felt weak all over. Why? Because he was wanted to meet Stephen Hawking and he, a meeting was fixed. Growing up disabled, you get fed up with people asking you to be brave as if you have a courage account on which you are too lazy to draw a check. So Firdos remembered how his disability, uh, people see, people view his disability and they always want you to be brave as if you have a courage account on your bank and you are not drawing it. The only thing that makes you stronger is seeing somebody like you. But when you see a person like you, you get inspiration from that person. Achieving something huge, then you know how much is possible and you reach out further than you ever thought you could. So such meeting such personalities definitely fills you with a lot of inspiration and courage. I haven't been brave, said his disembodied computer voice the next afternoon. I've had no choice. So when he met Stephen Hawking, probably this question he asked, Firdos asked, and Stephen said that it is not because I was, I'm brave. I could achieve so many things, but the thing is, I had no choice. I had to live with my disability. Surely I wanted to say living creatively with reality of his disintegrating body was a choice. So Firdos wanted to tell that there is a bigger meaning in his living because he is living so creatively, so usefully. But I kept quiet because I felt guilty every time I spoke to him, forcing him to respond. But Firdaus felt guilty because seeing him making such an effort for speaking, there he was tapping at the little switch in his hands, trying to find the words on his computer with the only bit of movement left to him, his long pale fingers. His fingers had become very weak and he was pressing the buttons so that uh, he, this, the, it could be transformed into speech. Every so often his eyes would shut in frustrated exhaustion. His eyes would shut because he was too tired and sitting opposite him, I could feel his anguish, his pain, his anger, the mind beyond with thoughts. His mind was full of thoughts and that came out in frozen phrases and sentences stiff as corpses. But it was such an effort to put his thoughts into words. We'll stop here in today's class. We'll continue further in tomorrow's class. Till then, you watch the video, revise and write down the main points. Thank you children. Have a nice